All right, uh, we got it all set up. No help from Ricky, of course. Greetings, I'm Bobby W6IWN. Today we're at Poda Park US 2640 Washu Lake in Nevada. We're in for a treat. I haven't busted out the kite antenna today. I was looking at the conditions and it was windy everywhere and I said, hey, it's probably a good time. So I'm gonna try something new with it. I got the Chameleon 8010 Infed Half Wave. I'm gonna see if I can't get that up and uh, go for a sloper or a vertical. We'll see if this even uh, works out today. Uh, you gotta have the conditions just right. So uh, Ricky's over here cooling off in the water. And then we got some wild horses over this way. I don't know if you can uh, see them or not in the background. I'm kind of hoping they don't actually come over here because I don't want to have any problems with the dog and the horses, but they just kind of uh, roam free in this area, which is pretty cool. So I have a dog stake over here. I already screwed in, you know, one of those corkscrew things, you tie your dog off, you just screw it in the ground. I have the kite here. I've got a couple other videos. I'd love to get into more detail, but I already have two videos on how to do this. So if you're interested, I'll try to post links below. I'll just see if I can get this thing in the air uh, real quick today, because it's kind of difficult filming in the wind and doing all this stuff anyhow. So I've got my stake in there, a couple elastic bands that are gonna go between the string and the kite. Once again, for more deal, ch uh, detail, check out those videos. And I'm gonna try to launch this uh, in-fed half wave. Let's see if we can't get a kite antenna in the air. Okay, this is the Soda Beams antenna lifting kite. So what it is, it's a single parafoil kite rather than two strings like you see the guys at the beach doing tricks with. This has one down the middle. So you can just stake it and it stays stable. You don't have to sit there and try to fly your kite the whole time. So it's a very useful application uh, for lifting antennas in the wind. I'd love to try this at the ocean. I've never activated it in salt water yet, but I think that would be amazing. All right, it definitely uh, looks like we have the wind. So what I did is down my kite string. Let's see here. It's been a while, I, I can't really remember. I'd say about 25, 30 feet, I have a fishing swivel tied to here. Cause you don't wanna just tie your wire straight to this. This kite is bouncing around in the wind and it's just gonna rip your wire and stress it all apart. So I have here already pre-made up is some elastic band and these come with this uh, soda kite. So I've probably got about eight feet of that. I think I used to have more on it when I first set this up and it just was too much weight. I've been kind of modifying this and trying different antennas as I go. I was using some random wires. So this is gonna be difficult with uh, just me because Ricky doesn't want to help. So it is daytime right now. So this is an 80 meter infed. I'm, I'm adding the extension to this chameleon antenna. Uh, I'm hoping that I stay out here later and maybe do some 40 meters or something and get some more gain out of this. Otherwise, I could just go with a 40 meter infed, but my kite's not gonna be that high. I kinda wanna do this to get my kite uh, up in the air too. I got it pretty good. It's, uh, it's not quite vertical. It's gonna be a sloper. And the wind, it's supposed to pick up here and keep continuing to pick up uh, for the rest of the day. But I, I think this wire might be a little too heavy or I need more winds today. We'll see. Uh, from past experience, this is gonna, come up with a lot of static charge, this wire being in the wind. This kite actually does come with some static bleed resistors and some plans to show you how to divert it. I've done that with a nine to one before. I th it seems like I was still getting a charge. Since I'm using this 49 to one today, all I did was I have a ground uh, spike here and then I have like a battery clamp. I'm gonna click, uh, clip it on my coax on the outside, on the ground side, and then I'm gonna pound this stake in uh, wherever I have my antenna. All right, uh, we got it all set up. No help from Ricky, of course. Uh, so I did the, the 80 meter infed, and I had it going pretty good with strong winds, and uh, not gonna lie to you, I wish I'd had them in video so you guys could all laugh on me. Uh, it pulled my antenna into the lake. Uh, the people down the beach got a great laugh. Uh, I got it back out everything's fine and then the wind just to kind of die down a little bit so i took off the 80 meter section so we're down to the 40 meter infed 
and uh, when the wind's just right, it's almost a vertical, uh, not quite. So if you can see, here's my antenna wire down here. And then this is my ground clamp. This is just clamped onto the outside of the, the ground of the coax there. And then it goes to a spike uh, that I have down in there, ground rod. And then I should have just brought a short coax. I didn't plan off tying it to the table. I did have it tied to a four pound uh, sledgehammer I used for my stake, but that wasn't enough when it pulled it into, into the water. So I, I have 50 feet of coax. I kind of just ran out this way. That way I don't have it all rolled up, cause any induction or anything I don't really want to introduce into the system. Uh, but very cool. I'm hearing some signals. Uh, even on 10 meters, let's hope uh, the winds uh, pick up and this doesn't pull my radio into the lake and we can actually get activated for a third time with a kite on POTA. Stand by. This is 2057 Lima, India Lima. I am on summit W Whiskey Alpha 7, Alpha Whiskey 003, Mount Bigelow in Tucson, Arizona, and you are a 59 plus. Roger, Roger, you are 5'9 as well. I'm actually flying a kite that is lifting my wire above the lake here. I'm running in a 40 meter in fed with a kite. Roger. Roger that, beautiful job. You have a booming signal, especially on this stand today. Okay, it was a successful activation with the kite antenna. I don't know if you can uh, see it back there. Here, let me give you a better shot. My hat is about to blow off here, it's so windy. Uh, there's my uh, bench there and everything. I took the wire off, so now this thing really just uh, shot up there. I don't know if you can uh, see it flying around up there or not. Oh, there it is. So yeah, it was a successful activation. Uh, I definitely need to add the static bleed resistors on this thing. Um, this location, and I forgot all about it here, this Washu Lake, uh, I get a lot of AM broadcast stations that overload my G90, even when I'm not flying a kite. And I uh, forgot to, to bring that into mind today when I came out here. So yeah, the, the overload from every AM station, it was getting some Padre games uh, really, really well. So I need to take this somewhere quieter and uh, bring a proper radio. I just was experimenting with the G90 because uh, this thing's got a lot of static buildup. If something bad was to happen, I'd rather have it to my G90 than to maybe my 710 or something. So this is another test run with a third uh, different antenna. And I've had the same result. So it looks like I need to change my location and definitely add the static bleed resistors. But very cool. This is our third activation uh, on the kite. We've also activated from here with a helium balloon. That was a long time ago. It was actually a bunch of balloons. I did buy a weather uh, balloon. I've been meaning to do a video with. Uh, helium's not the cheapest thing in the world uh, to be fooling around with antennas. So I've been kind of saving it for a special occasion or something, maybe field day or whatever. But awesome, thanks for watching. And uh, if you are interested in more details on the kite antennas, like I said, I'll try to post the links. Uh, if I didn't already post them above, I'll post them in the video description. But let's uh, get serious here for a minute. I should have brought this up at the very beginning of the video. When you are flying a kite antenna, you gotta really think of safety. This is fun, you can't lose your head and all, but uh, first off, power lines. So what are you gonna do attached to your kite is a wire. You need to be sure and look around. Let me show you my surroundings here. That there are no power lines anywhere near you, especially high voltage. So I'm looking the way the wind is blown and I have uh, a clear shot. If something was to happen and my kite was to break loose, with a whole bunch of wire attached to it. Hopefully it would hit the lake or something else uh, before that. You don't wanna be getting your, your wire in the lake either if you can help it. Uh, another thing I've read about on some kite antenna guides is, is having a fail safe part in your kite. You want it to be strong enough on the string to lift your kite, but uh, to an extent, you know, you want something to, to break in there and then the kite maybe break off the string if something really did go bad and you got some super high winds. So 
Uh, think about where you fly your kite antenna. If you do attempt this, uh, be safe about it. And uh, yeah, don't go fly your kite antenna by any power lines or anything stupid. Maybe where it, if it was to break loose, it would end up in the freeway or, or something like that. Uh, so try to be smart with your kite antenna and uh, have fun with it. 7-3 and hope to catch you on the next one.